What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gray Rabbit Finance. I'm your host, Tyler, and today I've got a classic for you. This is called Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. It's one of my favorite books for making a psychological breakthrough with your trading. So let's hop in. Mark Douglas had five major objectives in mind in writing Trading in the Zone. The first one is to prove to the trader that more or better market analysis is not the solution to his trading difficulties or lack of consistent results. Two, to convince the trader that it's his attitude and state of mind that determine his results. Three, to provide the trader with specific beliefs and attitudes that are necessary to build a winner's mindset, which means learning how to think in probabilities. Number four, to address the many conflicts, contradictions, and paradoxes in thinking that cause the typical trader to assume that he already does think in probabilities when he really doesn't. Number five, to take the trader through a process that integrates this thinking strategy into his mental system at a functional level. Chapter one, the road to success, fundamental, technical, or mental analysis. As a method for projecting future price movement, technical analysis has turned out to be far superior to a purely fundamental approach. It keeps the trader focused on what the market is doing now in relation to what it has done in the past. Instead of focusing on what the market should be doing based solely on what is logical and reasonable as determined by a mathematical model. On the other hand, fundamental analysis creates what I call a reality gap between what should be and what is. The reality gap makes it extremely difficult to make anything but very long-term predictions that can be difficult to exploit even if they are correct. So guys, we as traders must know and respect the fact that the current price is the closest to the truth and closest to reality that we can get. Now here's the next excerpt I found on page 5 and 6. The difference between the consistent winners and everyone else are anal analogous to the differences between the earth and the moon. The earth and moon are both celestial bodies that exist in the same solar system, so they do have something in common, but they are as different in nature and characteristics as night and day. By the same token, anyone who puts on a trade can claim to be a trader, but when you compare the characteristics of the handful of consistent winners with the characteristics of most other traders, you'll find they're also as different as night and day. If going to the moon represents consistent success as a trader, we can say that getting to the moon is possible. The journey is extremely difficult and only a handful of people have made it. From our perspective here on Earth, the moon is usually visible every night, and it seems so close that we could just reach out and touch it. Trading successfully feels the same way. On any given day, week, or month, the markets make available vast amounts of money to anyone who has the capacity to put on a trade. Since the markets are in constant motion, this money is also constantly flowing, which makes the possibilities for success greatly magnified and seemingly within your grasp. Guys, uh, just a quick takeaway from this. We, just, we must identify what separates the consistently profitable traders from the majority of losing traders. Uh, the shift to mental analysis. 95% of the trading errors you are likely to make, causing the money to just evaporate before your eyes, will stem from your attitudes about being wrong, losing money, missing out, and leaving money on the table, what I call the four primary trading fears. When you have achieved a state of mind where you truly accept the risk, you won't have the potential to define and interpret market information in painful ways. When you eliminate the potential to define market information in painful ways, you also eliminate the tendency to rationalize, hesitate, jump the gun, hope that the market will give you money, or hope that the market will save you from your inability to cut your losses. So guys, how do we do this? Uh, how do we take out the emotional aspect of trading? Uh, we must define risk and our stop loss before executing our trades. I like to use one or two percent uh, for trading Forex, um, but other markets might vary. So you're going to have to figure out what your risk uh, tolerance is. And how do we eliminate our emotions? Uh, we can also create safeguards and rules uh, for our trading system, uh, use stop losses and trailing stops to capture profits. And as the price moves in our direction, um, that takes the emotion of greed out of uh, out of the picture and using a stop loss takes fear 
and like just eliminating fear and greed from our trading process eliminates most of the major emotions we would feel. So we need to eliminate those two major emotions. Um, and we can only do that by creating safeguards. Okay guys, and that concludes chapter one. So let's move on to chapter two. Okay, on page 17 and 18, the lure of trading. When asked by the editor of Futures Magazine about the lure of trading and why so few people are consistently successful at trading, is it because they are getting into trading for the wrong reasons? Mark Douglas responded by saying, I agree that many of the typical reasons people are motivated to trade, the action, the euphoria, desire to be a hero, the attention one can draw to himself by winning, or the self-pity that comes from losing, create problems that will ultimately detract from a trader's performance and overall success. But the true underlying attraction to trading is far more fundamental and universal. Trading is an activity that offers the individual unlimited freedom of creative expression, a freedom of expression that has been denied most of us for most of our lives. The editor paused for a moment and asks, but why would having access to such an unrestricted environment result in fairly consistent failure? I answered, because unlimited possibilities coupled with the unlimited freedom to take advantage of those possibilities presents the individual with unique and specialized psychological challenges, challenges that very few people are properly equipped to deal with or have any awareness of for that matter, and people can't exactly work on overcoming something if they don't even know it exists within them. So one of the many contradictions uh, of trading is that it offers a gift and a curse at the same time. The gift is that perhaps for the first time in our lives, we're in complete control of everything that we do. The curse is that there are no external rules or boundaries to guide or structure our behavior. Uh, the unlimited characteristics of the trading environment require that we act with some degree of restraint and self-control, at least if we want to create some measure of consistent success. The structure we need to guide our behavior has to originate in your mind uh, as a conscious act of free will, and this, this is where the many problems begin. Our mental environment works like the universe, at large. Once we recognize a need or desire, we move to fill the vacuum with an experience in the exterior environment. If we were denied the opportunity to pursue the object of this need or desire, it literally feels as if we are not whole, that something is missing, which puts us into a state of imbalance or emotional pain. Uh, do our minds also abhor of a vacuum once one has been created? Take a toy away from a child who has not finished playing with it. Regardless of how good your reasons may be for doing so, the universal response will be emotional pain. By the time we're 18 years old, we've been on Earth approximately 6,570 days on average. How many times per day does the typical child hear statements like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do it that way. You have to do it this way. Not now, let me think about it. I'll let you know, it can't be done. What makes you think you can do it? You have to do it, you have no choice. These are just a few of the relatively nice ways in which all of us are denied individual expression as we grow up. Even if we only heard such statements once or twice a day, that still adds up to several thousand denials by the time we reach adulthood. So guys, it's extremely important that we reprogram our subconscious minds and our childhood conditioning. Um, we must respect our desire to become consistently profitable traders and honor it by taking proper action each day to fulfill our dreams. No one can jump directly to the peak of Mount Everest. Uh, one can only get to the summit after an accumulation of small steps. Some steps are easy, while others are over the bodies of fallen traders who once had dreams of Lambos. But in all seriousness, guys, uh, we have to, this is the most important step. We need to prepare the garden bed of our mind and we need to prepare our self-beliefs before we can even think about trading because we need to we need to uh, shape our reality around us by shaping our subconscious beliefs and making sure that they're consistent with our reaching our goal of becoming a consistently profitable trader. The safeguards. To operate effectively in the trading environment, we need rules and boundaries to guide our behavior. 
It is a simple fact of trading that the potential exists to do enormous damage to ourselves. Damage that can be way out of proportion to what we may think is possible. There are many kinds of trades in which the risk of loss is unlimited. To prevent the possibility of exposing ourselves to damage, we need to create an, an internal structure in the form of specialized mental discipline and a perspective that guides our behavior so that we always act in our own best interest. This structure has to exist within each of us because unlike society, the market doesn't provide it. The markets provide structure in the form of behavior patterns that indicate when an opportunity to buy or sell exists. But that's where the structure ends, with a simple indication. Otherwise, from each individual's perspective, there are no formalized beginnings, middles, or endings, as there are in virtually every other activity we participate in this extremely important. Uh, this, this is an extremely important distinction with profound psychological implications. The market is like a stream that is in constant motion. It doesn't start, stop, or wait. Even when the markets are closed, prices are still in motion. There is no rule that the opening price on any day must be the same as the closing price the day before. Nothing we do in society properly prepares us to function effectively in such a breath, a boundaryless environment. Even gambling games have built-in structures that make them much different from trading and a lot less dangerous. For example, if we decide to play blackjack, the first thing we have to do is decide how much money we're going to wager or risk. This is a choice we are forced to make by the rules of the game. If we don't make the choice, we don't get to play. In trading, no one except yourself is going to force you to decide in advance what your risk is. In fact, what we have is a limitless environment where virtually anything can happen at any moment and only the consistent winners define their risk in advance to putting on a trade. Guys, this is the great paradox of trading. Uh, you know, they, the old advice is uh, buy low and sell high, right? How hard can this concept be? But something which should be simple uh, can quickly become overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly complex uh, due to our own human emotions. So uh, that's why we must develop these safeguards uh, to eliminate uh, as much emotion from the trading process as possible. Okay, guys, that concludes chapter two. So let's let's uh, hop into chapter three. Okay, guys, uh, the next quote comes from page 54, and this is in chapter three, uh, and the chapter title is Taking Responsibility. Probably one of the hardest concepts for traders to effectively assimilate is that the market doesn't create your attitude or state of mind. It simply acts as a mirror, uh, reflecting what's inside back to you. If you are confident, it's not because the market is making you feel that way. It is because your beliefs and attitudes are aligned in a way that allows you to step forward into an experience. Take responsibility for the outcome and extract the insight that's been made available. You maintain your confident state of mind simply because you are constantly learning. Conversely, if you're angry, afraid, it's because you believe to some degree that the market creates your outcomes, not the other way around. Ultimately, the worst consequence of not taking responsibility is that it keeps you in a cycle of pain and dissatisfaction. Think about it for a moment. If you're not responsible for your results, then you can assume there's nothing for you to learn, and you can stay exactly as you are. You won't grow and you won't change. As a result, you will perceive events in exactly the same way and therefore respond to them in the same way and get the same dissatisfying results. Remember guys, as new traders, our beliefs about the market are reflected back to us since the market acts like a mirror to us. The market is not our enemy. Uh, it is not something to conquer, but something to be friends. We must always work with the market, not against it. To view it as an ally that can enrich us and not as an adversary that can take away. So guys, that concludes chapter three and let's hop into chapter four. Chapter four, consistency, a state of mind. This quote comes from page 60. To be consistent, you have to learn to think about trading in such a way that you're no longer susceptible to conscious or subconscious mental processes that cause you to obscure, block, or pick and choose information on the basis of what, you, what will make you happy, give you what you want, or avoid pain. The threat of pain generates fear. 
and fear is the source of 95% of the errors you are likely to make. Certainly, you can not be consistent or experience the flow if you're consistently making errors. And you will make errors as long as you're afraid that what you want or what you expect won't happen. Furthermore, everything you attempt to do as a trader will be a struggle. And it will seem as if you're struggling against the market or that the market is against you personally. But the reality is that it's all taking place inside your mind. The market doesn't perceive the information it makes available. You do. If there's a struggle, it is you who are struggling against your own internal resistance, conflicts, or fears. So guys, um, traders can minimize emotional pain by taking the following actions. Uh, thinking in probabilities, keeping a trading journal, trading statistics, win, weight, uh, win rate and profit factor, um, which I'm going to put a diagram up now. So you can see that um, you don't actually really need uh, a high win rate to be successful as long as you have a high profit factor. So I'm going to put a little chart below to show you that. Um, trading money that you can afford to lose. This is very important, guys. Um, you need to make sure that you're trading um, with a clear mind and trading money that you can afford to lose just gives you a psychological edge. Um, risking appropriate portion of their total account size. So like we mentioned before, I typically risk one to 2% per trade of my entire portfolio. Um, and then also guys accepting the risk that you are placing before you take the trade. Um, and then one, one last way um, to avoid emotional um, trading is to set uh, set mental take profit uh, targets and to also use trailing stops to capture profits and this eliminates our potential for greed so um, guys you know we're not going to cover uh, any specific strategies like that today but look in the in the future I will be creating videos about that so keep your eyes open and that concludes chapter four so let's uh, hop into the, the next chapter let's go to chapter six Okay guys, chapter six, the market perspective. Page 88, the uncertainty principle. To trade without fear or overconfidence, perceive what the market is offering from its perspective. Stay completely focused in the now moment opportunity flow. Spontaneously enter the zone. The most effective and functional trading belief he can acquire is anything can happen. Um, we have to be rigid in our rules and flexible in our expectations. To think in probabilities, our mental framework must be the following. One, anything can happen. Two, you don't need to know what is going to happen next in order to make money. Three, there is a random distribution between wins and losses for any given set of variables that define an edge. Four, an edge is nothing more than an indication of a higher probability of one thing happening over another. Five, every moment in the market is unique. So we must remember that uncertainty is the only certainty in the markets and we have to develop a trust for our trading system, uh, maintain consistency and let our trading edge do the work for us uh, without fear. And that concludes chapter six guys and I'm going to move into the last chapter. This is chapter 11, thinking like a trader. Now this quote comes from page 172. The first stage is the mechanical stage. In this stage, you, one, build the self-trust necessary to operate in an unlimited environment. Two, learn to flawlessly execute a trading system. Three, train your mind to think in probabilities. Four, create a strong, unshakable belief in your consistency as a trader. The second stage is the subjective stage. In this stage, you use anything you have ever learned about the nature of the market movement to do whatever it is you want to do. There's a lot of freedom in this stage, so you will have to learn how to monitor your susceptibility to make the kind of trading errors that are the result of any unresolved uh, self-valuation issues. The third stage is the intuitive stage. Trading intuitively is the most advanced stage of development. It is the trading equivalent of earning a black belt in martial arts. The difference is that you can't try to be intuitive because intuition is spontaneous. It doesn't come from what we know at a rational level. The rational part of our mind seems to be inherently mistrustful of information received from a source that it doesn't understand. Sensing that something is about to happen is a form of knowing that is very different from anything we know rationally. 
I've worked with many traders who frequently had a very strong intuitive sense of what was going to happen next, only to be uh, confronted with the rational part of themselves that consistently argued for another course of action. Of course, if they had followed their intuition, they would have experienced a very satisfying outcome instead of what they ended up with. It was usually very unsatisfactory, especially when compared with what they otherwise perceived as possible. The only way I know of that you can try to be intuitive is to work at setting up a state of mind most conducive to receiving and acting on your intuitive pulses. Page 185, creating a belief in consistency. I am a consistent winner because one, I objectively identify my edges. Two, I predefine the risk of every trade. Three, I completely accept the risk or I'm willing to let go of the trade. Four, I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. Five, I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. Six, I continue Continually monitor my susceptibility for making errors. Seven, I understand the absolute necessity of these principles of consistent success and therefore I never violate. I am a consistently profitable trader. Through the law of assumption and by reprogramming our subconscious minds, it is only a matter of time before our realities reflect our strong beliefs. I strongly believe that this is the most important first step to becoming a great trader, self-belief. I will be making uh, future videos on this, guys, on how to prepare your mind by reprogramming your subconscious mind and your self-beliefs. So if you take anything uh, from today's lesson, it's that the first thing we need to start with is our own self-belief and reprogramming our subconscious minds. From here, everything else will fall into place. But if you want to be a great trader, you have to start at this point, and we need to uh, reshape the way we think about uh, life we should reshape our attitudes to the market and re reshape our beliefs in ourselves. Now, this is on page 187. I'm sure you're, you are familiar with the saying, make up your mind. The implication of making up our minds is that we decide exactly what we desire with so much clarity, absolutely no lingering doubts, and with so much conviction that literally nothing stands in our way either internally or externally. If there's enough force behind our resolve, it's possible to experience a major shift in our mental structure. Virtually instantaneously, deactivating internal conflicts is not a function of time, it's a function of focused desire. Although it can take a considerable amount of time to get to the point where we really make up our minds. Otherwise, in the absence of extreme clarity and conviction, the technique of self-discipline over time will do the job quite nicely, if of course you're willing to use it. Uh, guys, just a quick story for you. In 1519, at the very last moment, uh, the Spanish governor of Cuba revoked the charter of an expedition to Mexico. After a fierce argument with its leader, the defiant Cortes set sail with 11 ships and 300 men anyways. And by July, he had worked his way along the Yucatan coast to Veracruz. There, eager to march inland to the Aztec capital of uh, Tenochtitlan, Cortes destroyed 10 of his 11 ships, cutting off his men's only hope of retreat and leaving them with no option but to head inland. The expedition ultimately destroyed the Aztec Empire and began the long and often brutal process of colonizing Mexico. Almost no one gave the ships a second thought. So guys, the point of this story is that we need to sink our ships. There's no way for us to retreat. If you want to become a consistently profitable trader, you got to make up your mind right now that you're sinking your ship and you're going to dedicate every day that you can to becoming a better and more consistent trader. So that's what I want you to take from this. Sink your ships and make up your mind and become a consistently profitable trader. Now guys, uh, that concludes chapter 11. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the content today. Uh, you know, this, this book uh, has helped uh, numerous amounts of traders make psychological breakthroughs. 
Um, I highly recommend it for your library. And I've also added a link down below if you'd like to buy your own copy. So check that out in the description. But I hope this content helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I just, I just want to know, um, what are, what are some of the self beliefs that you struggled with at first on your trading journey? So feel free to comment below. Um, and until next time, guys, peace.